We are Hope Church Guildford. This is a recent recording from our Sunday morning gathering. We hope you can join us at the Royal Grammar School on Guildford High Street, Sundays at 10 a.m. Enjoy the message. So, we are a church that loves God. We love the Bible. We love Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we've been going through a series that uh, we look through the different descriptions of the church in the Bible. And so over the last few weeks, uh, starting from the rings, which are going to be on your left, uh, we looked at how the church is the bride of Christ. And we've thought about how Jesus sees the church, this beautiful bride. We um, spent time thinking about uh, how, as a church, we are a flock, and that uh, he is the great shepherd who cares for each one of us. How we're the family, and also one body. Every single one of us plays our part. That's why International Sunday is important. As we come, and we all gather together, celebrating our diversity, and how we're all included in the body. We discovered how we're also the army of God. That church is like a base camp where we go out from, but then come back. Whether we're going out to fight or whether we're coming, going out in celebration, we always come back to base camp. And uh, we discovered how he prepares us for his mission. John Groves came and preached and spoke to us about how we are the temple. We are the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. That's what it tells us in 1 Corinthians 3. And um, last week, Malcolm um, spoke about how we are his handiwork. God has prepared good things for each of us to step into. And so this week, we're looking at how the church is the lampstand. It's a description found during the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus gave. And, uh, but, and we will go, go to that. But before we do, it's important for us to remember that every lamp has a light bulb. And so we want to start with who is the source of our light? Who is the light bulb in our lampstand? So we're going to be in John chapter 1. All the words will appear on the screen. Um, and so if you've got a Bible, you can turn to it. If you've got a phone, you can turn to it, but it'll also be on the screen. And John 1 says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been ha made. But in him was, the, the, was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. See, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This is John the Baptist. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself, though, was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. See, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And that grace and truth is King Jesus. Jesus Christ. He is the light that has come into the world. He is the light of life who we can come and know. Jesus is God. He was there in the beginning. That's what this passage tells us. He has been there with God throughout creation. He was in perfect unity, one with God. Yet God so loved the world that he gave up his one and only son. That's what we've been singing. And before Jesus came, he sent prophets and priests and kings who all testified and spoke about the one who was going to come from God. And Jesus came, he came to this earth. And yet to those he was sent to, the Jews, they didn't receive him. They didn't recognize him, and some even don't today. But he was the light of life. And throughout his time on this earth, he taught like no other. He treated people like no other. He faced persecution like no other. And he forgave like no other. Even his enemies marveled at him. And those crucified him looked and said, surely, 
this was the Son of God. Today, through his Spirit, he reveals himself to his people all over the world and to all who believe in the name of Jesus will be saved. They will be forgiven. They will become heirs to the kingdom of heaven. They will receive the light of life. They are called children of God, chosen by him, so they can say, we have seen the glory of God through his Son, who came full of grace and truth. See, each one of us, we were dead in our sins and transgressions. We've messed up. We've done things wrong. We can't even keep our own standards, let alone God's standards. Each of us was sunk without a trace, without hope, but the light of life came to us. Some of us have received him and said, yes, I believe. Some of us perhaps haven't yet. Maybe we haven't made that decision yet. But at one point, many of us in this room, including myself, took that step of faith. We put our trust in Jesus and everything changed. We walked from darkness into light. We walked from death to life. We were conformed to the world, now transformed by the renewing of our mind, by King Jesus, through the power of his spirit. For many people in this room, it was the best thing that they ever did in their life. I remember coming home the day that I put my trust in Jesus, and I couldn't help but smiling, but I didn't want to smile because my mum was a Christian, and I didn't want her to be happy by the fact that I had made the choice to follow Jesus. And yet, I just couldn't hide it. She was like, what's going on with you? Where have you been? What's, what's happened? Oh, I put my trust in Jesus. <laughs> the joy on her face, man. But... The thing is, it's because it's the best thing, and it transformed us, and it's changed us, and it's the best thing that has ever happened to me. And you know what? God, through Jesus, through the Spirit, is still at work today, transforming me from one degree of glory to the next, and he can transform you too. One of the things that I think is the most amazing is that Jesus deals with our guilt, and he deals with our shame. Guilt is feeling bad about what we've done. Shame is about feeling bad about who we are. And Jesus takes both and nails them to a cross. He deals with what you've done, your sin. He pays the price for your sin that was death so that you could be justified before God. Your bank balance that was minus by like, for me, it was millions and millions of minus for all the bad things I'd done. For you, it might not be so much. But it w- and yet, when we come and put our trust in Jesus... Bang, it's gone. It's like the man who's in debt, who goes to the cash machine to check, oh, what's it like today? Wow, it's clear. There is no debt. It's paid by the blood of Jesus. He's paid it all. It's gone. That's what happens when we put our trust in Jesus. All our sin and our shame is taken away. It's an amazing time. But he also deals with how we feel about ourselves. All the anxiety, all the worry, all the uncertainty. He says, no. You're my son. You're a child of God. It's not just that your debt is wiped out, but you're then given extra. You're given gifts. You're given the power of the Holy Spirit. You're given promises. Your account is in the plus. You're given his spirit. You're given an inheritance. You're given an identity and significance. And you're given a purpose and a plan to head into for God to for you to walk in through with God. Your name is written in his book. You are his, and he is yours. And you get all that you could possibly imagine from him. He's always by your side. He's always at work. He's always moving. You get God's grace. Grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. Sin, shame, guilt, all dealt with. And now you get his spirit to fill you. So you can walk in, knowing that he's always by your side. He's never going to let you go. He's always working. This is like treasure that's found in a field that's so precious that you buy the whole field so you get that bit of treasure. But we don't keep the treasure in the ground. We want to go and share that treasure, don't we? We want to share the good news, the wealth, the abundance that we are given. And so this light that's so precious and so wonderful shouldn't be a surprise to us that Jesus calls himself that light. And he says this in uh, John 8. So later on, he said, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said to the people, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me 
will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Isn't that good news? Isn't that amazing. It's fab- fantastic. Whoever believes can have the light, God's light, his life in their lives. So they can know all that it means to be a son or a daughter of God, forgiven by him, full of grace, filled with his power, to step into all that God has called them to do. The light of life, the one who transforms, the one who saves, the one who is the author of life, the giver of life, the true light has come into the world. His name is King Jesus. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. So my questions are, do you know him? And if you know him, do you love him? And if you love him, do you trust him? And if you trust him, do you believe what he says? Because Jesus says this about himself, and we say amen, but he also says this, you are the light of the world. He says in Matthew 5, on the Sermon on the Mount, right at the start, After he's done all the Beatitudes, he says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. See, the church, the people of God, are called to let their light shine in the darkness. And every single person who's put their trust in Jesus, they now shine this light. They're like the lampstand. He's the bulb, but we're like the lampstand. And you don't put a bowl over the lampstand. That would be a ridiculous thing to do. You don't put a bowl over a candlestick. You don't, in the dark, switch off the torch. You put it on so you can see. You let the light shine. It does good things. And... um, Every single person who's put their trust in Jesus is called to let their light shine and to trust in what Jesus says when he says, you are this light. When people met with Jesus, they were encouraged, they were built up, they were blessed to be in his presence. And so we should expect, that when people encounter us, that they're built up, they're encouraged, and guess what? They are blessed to be in your presence. Blessed, not because you're great, Because Jesus' light shines through you into their life. He has made you for so much more than what you can imagine. And so the church, the people of God, we are his light. And so we're meant to be placed on a stand. Meant to be in Guildford. That's why in Guildford we've got the big cathedral on the hill. Everyone can see it from everywhere they go. And we're meant to be like that. We're meant to be people that let our light shine. To be the lampstand. To be the beacon of hope into Guildford and beyond. And that my friends, is you and me. We're this light. Do you know, my kids, they quite like lots of different films. One of them's Madagascar. And in Madagascar, there's a guy called Marty. Marty's a zebra. And all of these animals, they live in the zoo. They live in the zoo. And Marty, one day, he, he's dreaming about what it would be like to be in the wild. He knows he's made for more than the zoo. He's created for something greater, to be out in the wild. Now, it's a scary place. And uh, just to spoil the film for you, they do get out. And when they get out, they, um, the, the lion, he starts like being his natural self in the wild. And so every time he sees a zebra, he sees like a big pork chop. And uh, his friend, who was good friends with in the zoo, actually now he wants to devour. Um, but don't worry about that. The main thing... <laughs> Is, it's a great film. You should watch it. The main thing, though, is that they were made to be out of the confines of the zoo, even though the wild was a scary place. Do you know, sometimes church can feel like a zoo. Sometimes. <laughs> oh, they are listening. <laughs> sometimes it can. And sometimes, though, it can be that safe place where, oh, well, I know everyone. It's lovely being here. I get fed, get the word of God. I get tea and coffee. I get nice warmth. I get friendship. I get all these nice things. And and suddenly, sometimes, being in the zoo can feel quite nice. It was nice for Marty. It's nice for the lion. They didn't have to go and hunt. They got there. They chill every day, get their food delivered to them. They get to get to enjoy all the confines of the zoo. And it was lovely and it was easy. 
But do you know what? Christians, we're not called to be in the zoo. We're created to be out there, out in the wild. And sometimes it's scary, and sometimes it's hard, but actually that's what we are created to be. No one gets a bowl and puts it over the lamp in their house. It's pointless. Like lions and zebras being in the zoo is pointless. It's not what lights are created for. We're called to let our light shine brightly before others, because that's what Jesus told us to do. And believe, that, like that passage says, that as they see the light shining, that they might come and glorify the King of heaven. Just imagine what would Guildford be like if each of us believed Jesus' words and lived our lives trusting that when we encountered people, that they would be blessed. Imagine what that would be like if every time we went and encountered our neighbours, our colleagues, our friends, that we'd expected that God is going to move in their life just because of our presence in their life. Then we might just take bold steps to say more about them. I did a survey a few weeks ago. I was at the university and we're doing questionnaires of people. And um, every single person that I chatted to knew someone who was a Christian. That was one of the questions. Do you know someone that's Christian? They all said yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I've got some friends that are Christians. And then the next question was, have they ever told you why they're a Christian? And virtually all of them said no. They tell them that they go to church. They might tell them they've got a light party coming up or they've got a quiz night. They might tell them some of the things that goes on in the church and what the church is like. But virtually no one had said that my friend has ever told me why they believe why they're a Christian. Imagine if we were people that actually told our friends why we believed. We told them about this light that has come into our life. We told them about this saviour who's taken away our sin and our shame and our guilt and our pain. We told them about this one who's given us a future and a hope and an identity and significance. We told them that, hey, now we are free. We're free from the ways of the world, but now we can live for Jesus. It means that it's, it's not... It's a joy to serve others. Well, why are you here sweeping up after yourselves? Why, why Mark? Why did you go and help clear out your, your neighbor's apartment? It's because I love Jesus. Jesus changed my life. And he's transformed me. So, of course, I'm happy to help. At Hope Church, we've dreamed about what would this look like if each of us believed Jesus' words? And some of you will remember Dub, a guy from Welcome Church, who spent some time with us a few years ago to help us think about how we can love people towards Jesus. How can we people that let our light shine proactively, with intentionality? And I just want to remind you of what our intentions are to help us be a lampstand in Guildford. Why we do what we do and how you can be a part of that and how you can have confidence in your own life to do these things too. See, 70 years ago, if you were to um, want to tell people about Jesus, you could rock up in a town, you could put up a big marquee gazebo, you could say, hey, we've got a preacher who's going to come and tell you about Jesus. People would turn up, they'd come, oh, I want to listen to this talk about Jesus, and many people would be saved and it would be amazing. The Great Commission was at work. As you go into the nations, tell people about Jesus, baptise them. Wonderful. But today, in Guildford, in 2023, that's not going to work. We could stand on the street corners, maybe one or two might come to believe. But most people think, oh, there's Christians parking on again about Christianity. They won't listen. We need to remember that the Great Commission is also, and the Great Commandment, sorry, is also part of Jesus' mandate. The Great Commandment is to love God and to love people. And as we do that, we can then work towards the Great Commission. It's just a contextual way for us to do what Jesus says today. And so there's three things that uh, Dub encouraged us to do, and I just want to remind us today. And that is to love people individually. So these are three things. Love people individually, love people in community, and love people towards Jesus. So loving people individually means we need to care before we share. It means we need to show them that we care about who they are, before we tell them about Jesus. We need to earn the right to invite. We don't want to just, they're not a project for us. They're our friends, they're our family, they're our neighbours, they're our colleagues. We want to show that we actually care. 
Jesus places high value on us caring. And so in Matthew 25, he says, whatever you did for the least of these, actually you do it for me. What you do for your neighbor, what you do for your colleagues, what you do for your friends, you do it to bless the Lord. And Jesus cares about that. And when we know this deep truth, it helps us to change our perspective. So that when I'm at work or when I'm at home or when I'm at the gym, Jesus is with me. He's with me when I go there. He's with me when I'm encountering my neighbours. That annoying neighbour with the overgrown garden, actually now, like the sacks did, oh, I can actually go and bless them. Because Jesus is with me and I trust that he's working and that others in the street might see his light and his goodness at work. The impact that we've read about is that they might see the good deeds but also glorify the Father in heaven. When we help others, when we show that we care, when we listen, let's expect that God might shine his light, that they might have questions. So what do we do? Well, it's obvious really. Invite people around your house. Go for a walk. Go to the pub. Allow yourselves to be in other people's spaces. Offer to help. Do it knowing that God is at work in you, that his light is shining out of you. It builds your energy for that kind of thing. So when you're tired at the end of the work day and, you know, your neighbour's making loads of noise next door, rather than banging, like, arguing, why don't you take around a bit of cake? Why don't you invite them around? Why don't you come and sit around? Catherine did it a few weeks ago. She invited a neighbour around. Why don't you just come, come around, have some Prosecco, have a bit of cake, and they just chat for a couple of hours. Simple, easy. God's light shining. We can look out and wonder what is God doing in this we can pray for our friends pray for uh, our colleagues pray for our neighbours ask God seek him as we're praying each day God when you wake up in the morning God how might you use me today how might my, your light shine through me today how can I be on the lookout for who you're bringing into my sphere today people would far rather you be a good listener than a good preacher Someone said it like this, that being heard is so close to being loved that for the average person, they are almost indistinguishable. Hearing and loving are joined together. So just taking time, chatting, listening, asking, how is life for you? Paul and Joe, who are part of Hope Church, who are serving in the Middle East, in this context, you know, they've been learning Arabic for the last two and a half years. They... um, are trusting that God is going to let his light shine through them, even though they don't, you know, they, it's hard, it's difficult. I asked them this week, hey, would you mind just recording a short video for us to say how is this working for you right now in the Middle East? So here's a video where they're just going to share for just a couple of minutes what, how, what this looks like for them right now. Hi, everyone. We're Paul and Joe, and uh, we live in the Middle East. That's where we spend our lives at the moment. Um, right now this week we're actually in the UK we've got a family funeral this week um, but most of the time uh, we, we're in the Middle East that's where we uh, where we're studying Arabic and where we uh, are seeking to build our lives um, in community and seeking to share the gospel um, in that place so Chris has asked us today just to be able to share um, a couple of stories about ways that our presence um, has made a difference there So we've got a little girl, she's called Eden, she's now seven months old and um, during our labour beforehand we were really praying that um, despite you know it being an unknown place, an unknown situation, that our heart was really that God would work through that and that the people involved, the midwives, the doctors, that they would feel a real sense of peace because we were there, that they would notice there was something different about us, about the way that we were conducting ourselves um, and that that would be just an opportunity for people to see Jesus through us. And um, during the labour, as the doctor came in towards the end to actually deliver Eden, um, she commented and she walked in and she said, wow, there's a real peace in this room. And um, that just filled my heart with such joy, despite the craziness of labour and everything, that at the end, in that moment, she noticed a real difference. And so just an encouragement that we don't necessarily have to even speak or share things, that actually our presence being in a place because we carry Jesus with us can change an atmosphere, can change a situation. So be encouraged that if you are there, Jesus is there. And that always is going to 
bring his peace and his presence. So um, I have a friend uh, who uh, who came around for coffee and just to catch up recently. And um, in our kitchen, we have a little board that we write just a new Bible verse on each week um, and trying to do it in English and Arabic. And um, and he he noticed that when we were just making coffee in the kitchen and um, asked about it and what it was from and um, and just asked me oh, like each week when you change this, can you send me? Um, send me the verse on, on WhatsApp and uh, we can talk about it. And, um, so I was just really encouraged by that. I've been sending him, um, I've kind of got free, re- free reign really just to send something from the Bible every week. Um, discovered he's got a, a copy of the Gospel of Luke. Um, and um, so that's just been really nice. I, I wasn't something I pushed for, but he just came around um, and we had something um, you know, from the Bible on, on, the, on the cupboard. And um, and he was interested, and uh, and that's opened the space to uh, to share the Bible more regularly with him. And um, don't know where I'll go at this point. Don't know exactly where he's at, but um, it was just a yeah, just an opportunity to make space for for looking at the Bible in some way um, together. So really simple little things, just from uh, from daily life, but some ways that we've seen uh, recently, just God using our our presence in the city that we're in. Um, so much love to you all. Really lovely to be able to uh, contribute and be with you in some way uh, today. And um, I hope to see you will be on the prayer meeting tonight. Um, so it'd be love, we would love to be able to, to connect and pray and share with you uh, more there. Wonderful. So, <laughs> yeah, you can wave to them. They can't see you, Sandy. It's all right. But you can see them tonight on Zoom. So uh, loving people individually. It's quite simple. Invite them in. Hey, they might see a Bible verse on your fridge and ask you about it. But we're not meant to be sole traders. We're also meant to love people in community. See, he's given us each other. He's given us this wonderful community together. Many people are disconnected today. They're isolated. They're lonely. And in Guildford, where we have one of the highest single occupancy residencies being built all the time, they're lonely. And yet, we have a wonderful community that they can be a part of. And people need community. You know, on a clear night, you can look to the heavens. And if you see one star, well, it looks quite pretty and beautiful. But when you see a sky full of stars, it's incredible, isn't it? And when people encounter you, they might think, well, you're, you're lovely. You're nice. You're great. But when they encounter loads of people, wow, maybe there's something in this. Maybe there is something more to than just you being a nice person. Because all of you seem to be nice and lovely and kind. It means we want to, we want to let our, our light shine brightly and we shine brighter together. It's obvious, isn't it? We shine brighter together and it means we want to build people into communities. Some people don't want to be a Christian because they don't want to be like Christians. It's true. But as we love people towards Jesus, as we are normal and kind, as they see that actually we've got to have lots of fun, we enjoy each other's presence, I want to be a part of this. I want to get involved in this. I want to get stuck in. How can I do this? How can I be involved? And so it's really helpful when we are loving people individually that we also help them to connect with others. So when you've got a social around your house, why don't you invite a few people from the church as well as your friends and neighbours and colleagues so they can meet others. It's why, as a church, we do what we call these low bar events. So like the quiz night is a great evening where you can invite your friends or your colleagues or your neighbours to an event where there'll be other Christians there, but there'll also be them. And they'll have a great time. There's going to be cheese and all sorts of stuff there. They can bring a bottle if they want. We're going to have a great evening like we did back in March. And I know, like, all my friends are coming, again, from football. They loved it last time. And so they were bringing their wives. They've asked if a few others can come. Yeah, sure. And uh, I'd love you to be inviting your friends. Say, hey, come and... Hey, we've got a community where you can get to know other people and they'll have a great evening. It's why we did the light party and these guys, they invited all their friends to come along. Hey, we've got a community that you can come and know and be a part of. It's why we'll have the Christmas carol events and the crib service and the, the kids party. It's why we'll do the fun day on the 18th of May because people can come and see a sky for the stars, not just one. Why not think about what you could plan at your own home or with your life group? Is there a social you could do together? Invite a bunch of people from church, but also invite your community. 
Let's love people individually. Let's love people in community. But we've got to remember that Jesus is always the goal. If we stop short of Jesus for ambitions for our friends, it's like robbery. It's like telling them, hey, I found all this treasure and not showing them it or telling them about it or even sharing it with them. It's like we can't, we're the people, we've got to remember that we're the people that can't offer eternity, only Jesus can. We can't transform people, only Jesus can. We can't pour our love into their hearts, only Jesus can. We can't forgive their sins, only Jesus can. If you are to love people, we need to introduce them to the author of life, to the source of all love. Being your friend is frankly not enough. It's not enough to save their soul. It's not enough to forgive their sins. It's not enough for them to know the life of the world and the light of life. It's like putting a bandage over someone who's having a heart attack. It's no good. Our aim is not to be pressuring or pushing people, but it is to be intentional, to intentionally love people step by step and come to just bring them to Jesus. When Jesus met the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, she, she's a wonderful model for us. She was transformed by Jesus and she ran to her village and she said, come and see. Come and see. Come and see. That's all she said. Come and see. That's all we need to do is to be people that having loved people, having cared before we shared, having earned the right to invite, having got them to the quiz night, we say, hey, come and see. Like I said earlier, so many people know someone who's a Christian and hardly any of them have ever heard why they're a Christian. Imagine what would life be like if every single one of us told someone in the next few weeks why we believe. What difference Jesus has made in our lives. See, in Acts 17, um, it says, it basically tells us, in verse, I won't read the whole thing, but in verse 26, it says, From one man God made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he's not far from any of us. What this passage tells us is that God has chosen when and where people live. And God has set boundaries around their lives that they might hear about him and believe. The very people in your life, God has determined that they would live on this planet in this time zone, in your location, in your sphere, that you might shine your light into their life, that they might come to believe and know him. Isn't that amazing? It's incredible. The people that you know, you might be the only Christian they've ever met. And it's wonderful that you care for them. We should do that. We should love people individually. And it's wonderful that you invite them to a quiz. We should do that, absolutely. But come on, let's... Let's tell them about Jesus. Let's reveal them to the life of the light of life. God has chosen when and where people live so that they will reach out to him and find him, even though he's not far from us. That is wonderful news. It's his mission, it's his idea, and we're called to care, we're called to love, we're called to invite, we're called to say, hey, come and see. And Jesus is the one that transforms and saves and heals, and forgives. That's his business. Our business is to share, to invite, and uh, to care. So a few weeks ago, um, oh yeah, so here's a few questions as we finish up. When did you last tell someone why you're a Christian? It's one for us to think about. When did you last invite someone? Maybe to the, to the quiz night or to the carol service or to church. And say, hey, why don't you come to church and come back with me for lunch afterwards. Make it an encouraging invite. When did you last invite someone to Alpha? Say, hey, come and hear about how there's more to life than this. Come and find out about why I believe what I believe. When did you last tell someone the gospel? 
The light of the world is in you. You are the light. You're like the lampstand. You're not called to be covered up. You're called to shine brightly. Jesus is the light of the world. He's the one that transforms. He's the one that saves. He's light. And in him we live and move and have our being. King Jesus calls us light too though. And we need to believe him and trust him when he says that. And he simply invites us to share his light with others. That is the purpose of every Christian on this planet. So come on Hope Church. Let's be those Christians. Let's be a church as God intended. Let's be the lampstand. Amen. Thanks for listening. We meet on Sundays at 10am at the Royal Grammar School in Guildford. We look forward to seeing you.